I just, I really like that. And <clears throat> uh, so that was right as the uh, sun rose. We caught some pictures looking out the window there. And of course, I had to catch a nice picture um, of uh, but take picture of some carpet on the floor. <clears throat> now, when we actually got to Buenos Aires, um, we stopped there uh, and stayed overnight briefly and took a little trip down to the old Buenos Aires, but it's, which had started as a, uh, a port. It's actually inland and up a piece up the river. And we hung out, and, uh, you'll see a picture or two later about it. These, I, I'm not sure if they're paper mache or not, figures are all over the place in town. This particular painter fellow was outside in the old section of Buenos Aires. I just thought he was kind of cute. I originally thought he was a waiter until you look carefully at the, uh, that's a palette there, that's not a paint thing. And of course, we all went to the uh, palace and sang, um, <clears throat> don't cry for me, Argentina. I don't know which, which one it was, but everybody, had, and I'm not gonna sing that here for you. I don't have the right voice for it. <laughs> and for those of you that are Catholic, there's the original home of uh, uh, Pope Francis, who is uh, named after me, Jorge. And he was, uh, <clears throat> no, I guess he wasn't. He's older than me. He was the uh, Cardinal of Buenos Aires, and this is his church. It's just beautiful. And I had to get a picture of Jesus. And when I came back and looked at it, really, I was looking at it, and oh, that's nice sculpture there. And the donkey suddenly jumped out at me. I just, that's just a sort of trump bois there. I, the donkey was kind of strange with him riding around on it. I found that to be an interesting photo. Now, <clears throat> this young lady, she was posing for pictures out there and a little boy was bored and wondered what was going on. I just have to show a little black and white here. I didn't know platform shoes were back in again, but I'm out of it. This is the old section of Buenos Aires, and it's worth a 45-minute visit, not really too much. We didn't go up in the uh, arts uh, area here, as you can see, another figure. <clears throat> that looked a little rickety for stairs, and uh, that was uh, not the best-looking uh, architecture that I've seen in a while. Now, this fellow is kind of uh, interesting. He's Santos Vega. And the story about him is he's a guitar player and he used to compete all over Ar Argentina. And if we all know the devil went down to Georgia and his story is the same. Uh, the devil or he, I don't know which, they challenge each other, but he lost. And um, I don't know, I guess that's a, Argentinian defeatism, but I thought that to be really fascinating that we have those in different uh, cultures. Oh, wow, I like that. Yeah, that's just, that was just uh, some painting. I, I just thought that was so beautiful that the, just simple sort of stuff at the, uh, down towards the uh, uh, dock area itself. And again, more of those figures, a soccer figure and a man about town on one of the tourist traps. I didn't go in. And the, uh, this area of uh, Buenos Aires, of course, was most famous for his ladies of the evening. And she was beckoning to us from a second story window. And uh, like I say, the architecture down there is kind of ratty, but I thought it was really fascinating, the texture. Yeah, really. And I also was interested, it just hit me the other day that she's wearing hair curlers yeah. <clears throat> in the middle of this. I didn't go up. The, um, um, whoops. That's cool. What we did the next day from there is we went down to the uh, Parque Nacional Tierra del Fuego, which is the uh, park at the Argentinian tip of the uh, South America. And as you can see, Buenos, we flew down there by a charter plane the next day, and it's about 1,800 miles, and it's about 10,000 miles by the Trans America um, Highway. But it goes the entire way to uh, Alaska. <clears throat> now this, I, uh, this is a, really a manipulated photo because it's quite gray and, and dull down there. There's a lot of cloud cover around in the park, but this was just an area we took uh, for a ride around to see what the uh, um, geography looked like before we got on the boat while they were emptying it. We eventually got on the uh, boat in Ushuaia, which we'll see pictures of later. I spent weeks learning how to say Ushuaia 
correctly. And we went on the Beagle Channel. Now, north of the Beagle Channel is, um, um, what's his name? Uh, I'm blocking on it now. Um, but the Beagle Channel is one of the passageways that you can get from the Atlantic to the Pacific or, or back and forth, um, other than around the Cape of uh, uh, Cape Horn. So as you can see, it is rather uh, gray and dull as we head out on this boat. And you can also see the uh, lifeboats there. They're all covered because of the weather that we may hit if the boat decides to uh, cause trouble. On the way down, there's all sorts of little islets and rocks in the middle. And what we have down there are a lot of sea lions. Uh, sea lions differ from seals because sea lions have a very small external ear, and that's the easiest thing to see. Sea lions can walk on their um, front flippers, and they have uh, large back flippers too. Seals can't do it. They have to sort of undulate um, to get from place A to B. The red material is not blood, it's krill. It's probably krill poop. And as you can see, this animal's had uh, <clears throat> some interactions, I'm not sure exactly which, but you'll see a lot of damage to a lot of the um, sea lions down there. This uh, particular group is of course singing Don't Cry For Me Argentina. Um, if you, the the uh, expressions on some of these guys are fantastic. This is a, a kelp gull. They have, been, since the 90s, learned how to land on uh, whales' backs and tear the flesh from them. It's really rather strange. They're, of course, scavengers. They don't fish as much as they do attack other things. Now, here's our trip. We start in Ushuaia, <coughs> the southernmost uh, real town in the world. There's a little town right across the... Uh, Beagle Channel that's about 2,000 people. Ushuaia is about 57,000. And it serves all the people that are going through the Beagle Channel. <clears throat> and the uh, uh, tourists, for example, myself. And it's right there. You go through the Beagle Channel, you go across Drake Passage, which is not Drake's, which I make a mistake later. And then uh, the rest of our trip was on part of uh, the Antarctic Peninsula. You may recall Larson Sea, which was, uh, which is a large um, uh, uh, result of a large glacier. An enormous piece of it broke off about uh, two years ago and broke up. That was a big story. <clears throat> this was not our passage, mm -hmm. but the passage of the ship the uh, week before us. Uh, wow. Thank God we missed that. Yeah, right? <laughs> Our, our, our passage was just some swells, but not being a seafaring sort, um, I had a little bit of nausea with it. This is the obser obser uh, observation area. There's also an area up there. And these are fin whales, which are the second largest whales and the fastest whales in the ocean. <clears throat> wow. We just saw them briefly. Now we saw giant, southern giant petrels all over the place. I'll show you some pictures. This is an immature one because it was modeled uh, um, feathers. Mm -hmm. This is a pintado petrel. You may notice just a little thing there. You'll notice that on a lot of these uh, seabirds. This is, and it, for among other things, it excretes salt. Um, the birds, of course, don't do well with salt water just like we don't. And they actually excrete salt from little glands up there and it's left out there. But this pattern is very typical of a Cape petrel or a Pintado petrel. And they were all over the place. They are absolutely gorgeous with the black and white uh, <clears throat> patterning on their feathers. Now our first stop, I, I don't know how I can, let's see, can I get, bingo. Our first stop was in the South Shetland Islands. <clears throat> Off here is South Georgia Island. So we stopped there. And most everybody that takes one of these trips stops in the South Shetlands at Half, uh, Half Moon Island. And this is my first view of the uh, Antarctic uh, archipelago. And you notice this looks very much like stuff you may see in the Southwest because a lot of uh, 
Antarctica is uh, um, from volcanic activity. Again, you'll see, see the red and the cinder cone effect here. And actually, there's actually quite a few penguins hanging out there. Now, when I went down to Antarctica, I was really interested in seeing the uh, geography because I had seen pictures of the ice and the ice in the uh, rock and the ice in the water. And, you know, penguins for me, although I really love birds and animals, were sort of a secondary thing. But when I got down there, I fell in love with the penguins. And I'm collecting penguins now. I now have five species of penguins I've seen. This is another uh, view of the National Geographic um, Explorer, which is their flagship boat. <clears throat> and this is Half Moon uh, Island. We landed there on the beach, it's Pebble Beach. We walked up and you'll see some pictures of this area. And we went down here. This is a um, penguin rookery, as is this area. And this was probably my first penguin I saw close up, a chin strap penguin appropriately named. And he had just gotten off the ocean. <clears throat> Chinstrap penguins are notice, noted as uh, brush tail penguins. You'll see that later. Um, they're uh, part of the group of the penguins that are known as brush tail penguins. There he is close up. He was not afraid of us at all. Very similar to what uh, happens when you go to the Galapagos. He sees a lot of people since a lot of boats uh, land there, but he doesn't he isn't bothered by them. I'm going to use the male gender here because I know um, penguins aren't very dimorphic. <clears throat> and I can't tell one from other uh, from another from distance. Again, the, you'll see the brush tails here. Now this uh, fellow was heading on the pebble beach up towards his uh, rookery. There he is a little closer. <clears throat> And on the way up, he decided to uh, just chill out. That's what you do in Antarctica, is you chill out. Sorry. Was it snowing? Yeah. Okay. And, and, and that brings up an interesting point. Um, a lot of our Ant Antarctica, if not all of it, is a desert. They generally receive only several inches of uh, precipitation in the form of water a year. Oh, wow. And <clears throat> so when you see the, the glaciers and the um, icebergs, it took literally thousands of years to make them. So we had this little um, dusting of uh, snowflakes, as you can see, which re it really helped out my, my pictures. I really, it really was kind of cool to put them in. Mm -hmm. So this guy was, this is the same guy a few seconds later from this guy and a slightly different uh, angle. And this was a penguin that was washing himself or herself off <coughs> before heading out to sea to catch uh, krill and uh, small fish, etc. You can still, you can see the uh, staining that they have. The, rook the rookeries, you can tell, first of all, by the squawking and by the smell. <clears throat> what kind of camera were you using? Um, this, let's see. This was my uh, Canon, which one did I take with me? I took the 5D Mark IV and I bought a, a, a 70 to 300 lens shortly before I left and took the 2470 with me and 140 millimeter. There was a limit on what we could fly on the um, charter flight from Buenos Aires to um, Ushuaia, which really um, put a crimp in what you could do if you wanted to have <clears throat> a rather complete uh, collection. I really wanted to take another body. I wanted to take uh, my 7D to get birds with, but um, <clears throat> uh, it turns out this worked out pretty well. Now this is, this is a series of some of my favorite pictures from the whole trip. Um, this is a fellow or gal walking down beside a hundred year old whaling boat. Now the penguins uh, were uh, slaughtered for their meat by the whaling boats uh, when they were down there, but they bounced back considerably. Now, some of them are having problems due to uh, the warming oceans. Some of them uh, can't live in, in warm areas. 
this fellow was uh, walking by here and I got several pictures of him. You can make your own mind up whether uh, you like his pose here or there. He's looking more towards me and that's a little closer cropped by in the, the uh, zoom or there you can see the island off in the distance there and the different kinds of rocks that were present. <clears throat> oh, wow. Cool. Now, penguins, uh, a lot of penguins uh, have rock nests and you can see them walking back and forth all over the place with um, pebbles. One of the things they do <clears throat> is you'll see them uh, get out of their nest, especially if there's two, two of them there, the male and female at the same time. One of them will wander over and steal a rock from another nest and be uh, squabbled at about it, if that's a word. And someone else will come back and they spend the whole, you know, a whole lot of time doing this. Now this particular um, um, one was heading up from the beach <clears throat> and um, he was really rocking it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> so, and it was, it was slightly snowing and I, the snow really it, it gave it a little character. This is a particularly ugly bird called a snowy, um, um, oh geez, uh, a sheath bill, uh, snowy sheath bill. And he's particularly ugly. He's a scavenger. He will actually uh, run after penguins and scare them to regurgitate the krill. He will also uh, take advantage and eat krill, I mean, the uh, penguin babies and uh, eggs from time to time. <clears throat> and again, the kelp gall, he's particularly aggressive as well. So the penguins have a hard life of it down there. And we're gonna show you a picture of one of their worst predators uh, out of the water. And this is the penguin rookery. You remember, I, you recall I pointed to you up on the hill there and it was snowing fairly heavily and a little bit uh, uh, foggy over there. So we kept to catch the hills behind it. You remember the, the, the island and behind it was some mountains. Now the color in, that you'll see it here is pretty much all due to lichens of various types because the primary um, color palette is white and black with various blues. But when you see these oranges and greens, it's the uh, lichens, which are of course um, algae plus uh, fungi that are uh, living together. <clears throat> Just to play games, I desaturated that to show, I think it looks makes a pretty good black and white. Mm -hmm. Again, this is the rook here, and this is where a lot of the sound comes from, from time to time. You'll see them, we'll get a better picture of some, um, another type of penguin in their rocky nest later. But this is not like it's very comfortable. <laughs> yeah, that's surprising. That's what they choose for their nesting. Uh, interesting other story. They know where they're nesting. It snows and everything uh, covers the ground with snow but they go back to their nesting place and they um, uh, defecate there and their urine and defecation actually melts the snow. So what happens to give them a long enough period is that they actually clear an area. They can have, you'll look, if you look around at the pictures I take, you'll see snowy areas and then you'll see areas where the penguins are, which are just rocky. Another picture of the, the mountain in the background. <clears throat> One of my uh, friend, uh, observers point, hey, did you see how that echoes the, uh, hmm. yep. <clears throat> so I sort of like that. Again, I desaturated that. That's a poor man's attempt at making black and white. I didn't do a great deal of work with that. Again, rocking out there, bringing a, uh, bringing a pebble back for home. <laughs> and the penguins use their um, flippers to balance because they're really not very good on land. 
we were supposed to stay two meters away from them, but they'll come up very close to you without any worries whatsoever. You're allowed to, you don't have to go running away if they get within that. They actually have uh, penguin highways where they go up and down where they stomp down the snow to facilitate. <laughs> look at him, that's cute. I like ping I like birds that just look at you. Yeah. Sort of looking at you like, what you looking at? <laughs> I don't know what this guy was doing. I have no idea. I think he swallowed his pebble. <laughs> <clears throat> and again, hanging out, chilling out in the snow. I and again, I don't know. They're on the way up the hill and they just stop. Mm. Now, after we were finished at the Shetland Islands, we went across through to this portion of the Weddell Sea um, uh, to this area. And I remember, as I told you, there's Larson Sea, the, uh, where the uh, large um, <clears throat> piece of ice broke off. Now this area was really way neat. And I had a lot of fun here with the different colors, with the clouds moving over and changing the, uh, the light on the situation. Now, this is Paulette Island, and we'll see this, this little uh, feature. At the base of this, there's a lot of uh, um, uh, other uh, penguins, which we'll see, see a little bit later there. Is that a structure of some sort that is, that seems so, um, I don't know. What is that in the foreground there? That's a that's an iceberg. It is. It seems so perfectly shaped. Yep. Well, they're not perfectly shaped. Uh, the icebergs in the southern hemisphere, a lot of them are what we, are what are called not we, what are called tabular glaciers. So they look like tables. So you're yep. going to see a bunch of examples of that shortly. Uh, a, a bunch of pictures of it. These are quite a bit different than those that are in the uh, uh, Arctic Circle. Okay. And to remind you, about 87 to 90% of this glacier is down here. Mm -hmm. But they come from very flat, um, I'm sorry, from very, these icebergs come from very flat glaciers. So they tend to be this way and they go straight up and down. So they're probably not as dangerous um, as the one that took out the Titanic. Now is Paulette Island the, the little mountain behind it or is it the... Yeah, it's the, that's the yeah. island. That's an island. Okay. I think I have another picture of most of it. I may have cut it out, but that's an island. That's, that's, there's water all around that. And this area is where the uh, large, those large glaciers, um, including Larson A, B, and C, are breaking off these enormous pieces of ice, that, one of which you see here. They're, they're calving all the time, these pieces of ice. Uh, that the one that we were talking about from Larson C was just particularly enormous. So <clears throat> one of the largest ones we have seen recently, but they're putting these out all the time. When we were over there at Paulette Island, um, we got to see them. In addition, there's temporary ice that forms in the wet LC. Um, it's different from uh, fast ice. Fast meaning it's, it stays there. Again, uh -huh. um, the blues and the, are just fascinating to me. Now we'll get a bunch of pictures of this in all sorts of different light. Keep on mind this part. There he is again. You start to see some striations right there. And more striations. Those are the layers. This guy's thousands of years old when we get a close up look here on him. And again, all that is basically is a change in the uh, cloud cover. And to get some idea oh, of wow. the wow. scale of this, I have another scale picture. That, that's a Zodiac. We all, we all got in a Zodiac and traveled all over the place with them, which is got up close to the um, um, penguins and stuff, some of them which were on. Uh, and we also, when we got off the big boat, that's the... Uh, um, the the, boat, the way we got that and we landed on it. We landed wet. So you had to have um, um, big boots on and uh, appropriate 
uh, covers for that. Now, the interesting thing, everybody wonders, well, you were probably pretty cold down there. And I said, uh, no. And the interesting thing is, is when I was down there, we were probably not any colder than 20, you know, 28 degrees. And it turns out that actually Tupelo was uh, below uh, our temperature. We were 30 some down there. Um, but of course, when the winds are blowing all the time, like they are down there and the boats move in at uh, uh, seven knots, uh, seven knots on the, on the uh, um, boat with the uh, 28 uh, degree wind blowing at you, it's, uh, <clears throat> quite uh, nippy. Mm. And again, there's the front that you saw where that big slab broke off. And one of the things that makes the um, um, thing, the uh, iceberg so interesting is of course the erosion patterns and the weather that gets at them. There it is close up. Mm. So, um, <clears throat> And you can see each one of those layers is a, a year's worth of snow. Another view from the front and a different, <clears throat> a different tabular berg. And these are all either smaller pieces that broke off from that or calved independently. This was quite moody. I don't have to tell you that. Yeah. Now, to give you some idea, this is the glaciers that they break off from, and as you can see, they're quite flat. <clears throat> now, not everything is flat, so we're going to start moving around there. Wow. And again, that's Paulette Island. Oh, okay. Okay, so we're still in the, in the Paulette Island region. And that, that was just a fascinating glacier. I mean, the iceberg, that's just fascinating. And there's another picture of a close up where a hunk of it broke off. Oh. But that was just so soft and smooth from a distance, completely different from everything else we've seen. And this was uh, <clears throat> taken on by wave action and close up. And the bl these, these blues are accurate. They are, they are that, um, pretty amazing blue that you'd see. That's pretty, yeah. There she is herself. <clears throat> there she is being eaten by an uh, iceberg. <laughs> yeah, look at the teeth even. <laughs> yeah, I, thought that, I just think that's kind of cute. <laughs> there she is again off to your right. And in the foreground, you can see the brown spots. Um, and those were, the, there were Adelie penguins around. For some reason, I keep on forgetting that. We'll see Adelie's in a few seconds here. And that's some of their uh, droppings left behind. Another local island that's not uh, that. And these are Adelie penguins. And you can see there, they've got a dark hood on. Uh, the, the entire uh, bird is hooded. There's no chin strap or anything. And a little closer, he's <clears throat> black and white. And you can see they have a, a blue, instead of that light orangish eye ring. That's a sclera. And again, uh, he wonders, to, uh, who are you looking at? And he as well is a brush-tailed penguin. <clears throat> And again, singing the theme song. <clears throat> Dancing. Now, oh, I wanted to point out, yeah, this is all, this is all krill. And again, a um, kelp gull. I don't know where they get these names from. The birds don't eat kelp. <laughs> And again, a piece of ice that is uh, um, eroded and broke down over a considerable time, had waves wash over it. I love specular highlights. That's pretty. 
in this the blue mm -hmm. there that's pretty yeah see that th this is real that you know the shallow water that's exactly what yeah. it looks like <clears throat> now we saw some uh other whales as too these are orcas i think they're type c and i don't know the difference we were lucky enough to have a scotsman on board that was a um a whale expert i mean he got his um, master's degree in whaling and has written a bunch of papers. Now I can tell a female from, a, now I can't sex a penguin, but I can sex a, an <laughs> orca. This is a female, okay, because of the uh, um, dorsal fin is curved and shorter. And that's probably a, um, a juvenile female. These guys are a little hard to tell, but that's probably female, female, and I can't tell that one. And again, this one might be a male. The angle's wrong on this. I was asleep at the time everybody saw these and I staggered out on the deck <clears throat> half asleep and it was pretty much the end of their show. By the time I uh, um, got there, uh, you might ask, uh, did we live in the, we weren't in South far enough uh, to have 24 hour days. And we, we didn't go south of the 60th uh, latitude, okay? So um, we saw long days, but not uh, 24 hours. Again, that's the same, just a, uh, you know, 45 minutes later and further away, there's that. I don't. I must be honest with you. I don't know whether I <clears throat> pulled in or we got further away. Whoops. Wow. That's not my picture. <laughs> That's a Gerhard Richter painting that sold for twenty-one point six million. In 2017. Jeez. Now I think my I think my photos are better than his picture. I think yeah. so too. Yeah. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not Gerhard Richter, so um, <clears throat> yeah, there that, that is that. And, and he he since he's German, I don't think he made it to the south. So you can tell the difference in the uh, bergs. That's a that large berg is uh, he had three berg pictures apparently. And that was, and at the time it took, I'm not sure if there's been any since then, but that was the painting that was the most expensive landscape painting ever. I guess that's, I guess that's all he needed, you know. Pardon me? I guess that's all he needed was those three, boom. <clears throat> well, I don't think he got the money from that one. There was uh, some rich American that had that. Oh, sure. So the other ones, another one's in the UC, uh, out in the San Francisco Art Museum. So we went down. And there we were, there's Paulette Island. And we went down here, and this is not Drake's Passage. We went to Wilhelmina Bay. <clears throat> and that's named after Queen Wilhelmina, uh, Dutch. Now I tried to get some really good pictures of this, but, but the ship, unfortunately. I mean, it's parking the ship. So that thing just blows through, uh, that's not real thick ice there. It's only about six inches. But that's the way I try to get better pictures, but I was a little, this was hanging the iPhone by hand way out there. And a lot of people had uh, selfie sticks and I didn't have one, which would have gotten a lot better picture. And I wouldn't have been as fearful of losing my phone down in the uh, Antarctic uh, waters. But what we were doing at that time was parking the boat in the ice. They just plowed that boat through the ice and hung out there and put down the um, gangway and sent Santa out. I don't know, I think, if you can see that there. Yeah. And they served us uh, grog from that thing. It was really quite, it was really quite pleasant. <clears throat> and what we did from there is we just patterned out there and went and uh, um, looked at the local sites. Of course, there's pictures of people pulling the uh, rope as if they were yanking the boat in there, ship in there. Now, this is Wilhelmina Bay. And again, these are just, I'm not, I don't claim to be a landscape guy, but the clouds and the um, water and the rock and the ice was just amazing. <clears throat> I played black and white tricks with this, 
you can make of it what you wish. Mm -hmm. I goosed up the contrast mm -hmm. and did it. These are almost, I think almost all of these were from standing on that um, um, ice, wandering around on it. And you can see the edge of the, right there. This is not fast ice. This ice will disappear. Um, we, were, we went there December 8th or something. I remember it pretty well because my wife, I missed my wife's birthday and she's still mad at me about it. And um, she's sitting here. And uh, <clears throat> stayed there through like the 20th. And that's early uh, spring for them. And you can see where the, the glaciers are coming down to the water. As I said, the clouds were just amazing because, you know, they form in part when the air rises up over the, the small mountains that are there. And again, you see the the large uh, ice mass we were sitting on right over there is a uh, sea lion and that's a kayak. Um, I, I have oh. significant problems with my low back so I didn't go kayaking and I wish I could but I didn't. There was a emperor penguin which we'll see a little later that was hanging out just a stray lost emperor penguin out there an immature one. And a little closer, as I said, I like things close. Crab eater seal, crab eater seal, and three crab eater seals that they're what they call hauling out on the um, ice flow. You might barely be able to make out the kayak there, two person. I don't know what I did here. I used two different pictures to make the black and white. This is a crab eater seal, which I am told is probably the most sea lion, yeah, the, the most common uh, in the world. They don't eat crabs. They eat fish and krill. Like the krill thing, yeah. Krill yeah, the krill, unfortunately, they've sampled them and the krill numbers are uh, plummeting, <clears throat> unfortunately. Um, humpback whales and other whales survive on them. Um, penguins do, sea lions do, and uh, seals do. This is actually a crab eater seal, uh, excuse me for the, and the um, problem, of course, is they're at the bottom of the food chain. Above that is uh, things like leopard seals, um, <clears throat> orcas, which you've seen, which eat the penguins and eat these guys. And without krill, you're not going to have any uh, upper uh, animals as well. Now, this is the only um, leopard seal we saw. Mm. hauled out on the ice. You oh, can see cool. the spotted um, <clears throat> uh, fur underneath there and the slick and the face is very rounded off. That's our crab eater again. Now these are these are on the ice uh, shelf that we landed on and pulled out. They're just a couple of guys hanging out there. We were supposed to say you know, five meters away from the <clears throat> this case. Now you'd say, oh, that looks like the gills on a fish. No, that's slash marks. Can you see that? Mm. That's a slash mark as well. <clears throat> the naturalist was not, did not hazard a guess. And in, in fact, she actually said, that's not clear what those injuries are from, whether those are, the, whether those are leopard seals that 
went after them and, and um, weren't powerful enough to take them or there were two of them after. But if you look around, almost all the crab eaters have them. He's just uh, sleeping there. See all the wounds there? Mm -hmm. Fresh one, fairly new one. And that blood there is not blood, that's krill. <clears throat> now here's our stray emperor penguin. We pulled that uh, 360 foot boat right up to him or her. And he doesn't have the coloration you remember from emperor or king penguins. And he looked at us for a while, but he, had bad, he didn't like us and headed into the water. Oh, I was hoping I'd get a little better light on that, but that's about the best we could do. It's pretty good though. Yeah, it is. Now everybody tries to go through the Lumaire Channel, which is in the, on the uh, peninsulas, you know, there's a series of islands all over there. And we try to go between them and the Lumaire Channel is a famously beautiful and we went into the Lemaire Channel and uh, some icebergs blocked it. So we backed, and he backed out and headed out. So we got some interesting ice, but didn't get to see the entire channel. Whoops. I turned, uh, what did I do there? I had a birthday there. I turned uh, some number. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. They served all three of those to a diabetic. <laughs> it happened. Hey, but it looks like cheesecake. That's a little better. <laughs> well, and you know, the guy here, he has problems with this. So, and these guys were horrible and they kept singing. <clears throat> they were terrible. <laughs> they had a lot of heart in it and the food was great, but boy, the singers were, oh boy. So it's interesting, you know, I've not been in, in chips before and it's interesting that you'd think, what the heck, you can't get a, uh, ship through there and as you go through it and you go closer all of a sudden it opens up and that's the same entrance as that is a few feet later and it was wide enough easily to get us through it's when we turned the corner we couldn't go any further <clears throat> I just put these up for comparative purposes uh, this monotonic monotonic uh, color um, pattern was just fantastic so after this, we went to Point, Point Lockroy. Now Point Lockroy, we'll show you in a second there, is an old uh, British weather station. We went to Jugal Point in Paradise Bay, and they're all down here at the bottom. And this is, uh, Port Lockroy is on a, it's no port. I don't know why they call it that. It's on an island here, and you can see, remember I told you that the, there's ice, and then there's this, I mean, there's all these cleared areas, and then there's this thick coating of, snow and that isn't cleared up yet. Well, this is the rookery, okay? There's two, there's two groups of buildings here. Now this building is the um, equivalent of Walmart or Target. <laughs> it goes from there to there. And I bought a t-shirt for my wife and it was, unfortunately it said uh, for children, so it didn't fit too well for her. But you can see all the, uh, Penguins, uh, this is a different kind of penguin we'll see in a second, uh, nesting here. And those are snowy sheath bills waiting for something to steal, eat, or kill. Now, what happens is that they advertise in the uh, British Isles for, in the UK, for people to be um, caretakers for this place. And I think there's four of them. And thousands, even before COVID, every year sign up. I mean, it's like 2000 people okay. sign up to come down here and live for six months alone with uh, three other people. That's cool. And take care of that, that one building in this building and sell a few things, souvenirs in here. And they have all the weather station stuff and tins that are made, it's, they're cubes. The tins are all cubes from there, which is really quite fascinating. So over here is a really, it's, uh, they've got interesting stuff, plus the old instruments from the sixties, which are quite, um, uh, primitive in comparison to what we have today. That's the outbuilding. I think that's the sleeping quarters. And again, you can see how the rookery is all cleared. And these guys, that guy's looking for uh, leopard seals. <clears throat> Before They did go in, there are no leopard seals. Now this guy is a Gen 2 penguin. 
you see the orange beak and the stripe about the mm -hmm. eye. And again, he's a brush-tailed penguin. <clears throat> and he was the most prominent. He was the penguin that we saw around Port Lockroy. I like that. Now, uh, I don't know why I put this in here, but this is an Antarctic tern. The Antarctic terns don't leave Antarctica. The Arctic terns make one of the largest um, trips in the world every year. They go from the north to the South Pole and back in one year, 24,000 miles. Jeez. Quite amazing. And <clears throat> the Antarctic uh, terns um, uh, roost here and they have a rookery as well. Here's close up. The, the rocks here you can see look more volcanic. There's a nest. And again, you can't tell, there's the brush tail. You can't tell um, gender of any of these. And the male and female participate um, equally as far as I know. Now we've got a terrible story to tell. And again, <clears throat> they're telling and singing again. And this is the what they're sleeping in that they clean off when they go in the water. The nests are filthy. Just a comparative walking picture. <clears throat> and that guy just uh, stood there for a while because this was not a regular route. This was not a penguin highway here. And the problem with that, we were told to be careful about stepping in the penguin highway because we can put um, dents in it, which the penguins will fall into, etc. So this is a real, I don't know why this one wanted to go here. Now this is another bird. Um, it's a cormorant and I don't, how many cormorants are in North Florida? Do you see them there? <clears throat> yeah. We have both cormorants. cormorants. You do? Yeah. Well, this is a, a relative of it and it's called, they call them shags. It's a blue eyed shag and the, the species of these is still very obscure, but they're part of the imperial um, cormorants. So they're uh, different given the colors. You see all the white on this compared to the neotropical, which is the most common one in the Southern US. <clears throat> oh, wow, that's cool. Nice. Wow. That's the, that's the ship behind it there. Unfortunately, the ship was right in the way of my flight pictures, but you know, you pays your money, it takes your chances. Mm -hmm. So they were landing at their nesting site. And both mom and dad are here and a little one. And they actually make an effort of putting something other than rocks there. This is uh, stuff they pick up from the ocean because there, no, there is no green plants. Feeding time. Again, the little one. A little one closer. One of these has two of them in. More. Poor starving bird. Now this nasty sucker <clears throat> is called a South Polar Skua. There are several species of Skua. Skuas are nasty uh, bird attackers. They are um, they're carnivores, but they're also, they'll also eat almost anything that will eat uh, dead animals, live animals. And this one was hovering above the Gen 2 penguin colony in order to go after the eggs. Now, this is the most ineffectual thing you've ever seen. This one's screeching at it. You'd think with those beaks, you'd be able to protect itself. No, it backs off the nest. There's the end of the nest. The nest is back in here. Mm. Now this one went diving, I actually took a little liberty. The first dive in here, um, the skua missed the egg. And see all they did? Didn't peck there or anything. They need, to, they need some um, martial arts training. <clears throat> and he backed off. No, that one I think he actually had the egg. And there he goes with it. Oh, yeah. He went up the hill and devoured that thing in a matter of uh, seconds. There were some scattered empty eggs up in the hillside. <clears throat> so the poor penguins have to deal with, uh, they also go after the chicks. We came at the, um, 
uh, chick time for the uh, skags and egg time for them. That's a cool picture, though. This or the previous one? The previous one. Yep. Yeah. Again, I like the lichen. Yeah. Another picture of the lichen and the uh, volcanic rock. <clears throat> now, just to point something out, this is all guano. Wow. And this, of course, is volcanic rock. This is an abandoned British um, observation site. Another picture of it. I'm amazed that it's still together, but I would, we, we were told that it was abandoned. So it puts up with all those winters. Now, I told you there'd be another scale picture to show you the scale of the uh, glaciers. These are all those <clears throat> um, zodiacs with four to six people in addition to the uh, naturalist driver. Yeah, that's, that's crazy. Scale. Yeah, we had a, we had a, um, a wimpy uh, young lady that was quite smart, but she didn't want to get close enough because if that thing calves, you can uh, end up swamping the uh, zodiac. No guts, no glory. <laughs> this is in Paradise Bay. Mm -hmm. I don't know why anything in, in Antarctica would be considered paradise, but. <laughs> And again, oh, that's, our, that's our passage way out. <laughs> our, our captain actually has at least three. Um, he's been down there so often and mapped so much. He has at least um, three things in the Antarctic um, water named after him. That's how famous he is. <clears throat> it was really cool having a guy like that. <clears throat> So we stopped at Danko Island after the last places. And again, the light and the fog was a, was a friend. And I took a bunch of pictures near the, we couldn't get close enough to the uh, Antarctic Turn Rookery but I managed to get some pictures. I'm disappointed I didn't have my uh, 400 millimeter lens here, which is my flight lens. So we only had the 300. Do you think the 300 was enough? No. Nope. Okay. Not, not for this stuff, not for the flying birds. Got you. <clears throat> I, I went on another trip. When I went on the trip to Costa Rica, I also, I had an even more rigid um, uh, weight limit. This is, uh, they all worked out pretty well though. So I'm not, the pictures worked out. I, you know, if you try to increase the contrast there to make mm -hmm. it so you can actually see the eye, this stuff looks terrible, but I love the translucence. I if, if the light had been different, you'd have seen a white, you know, like a gull, like a white gull bird instead of that translucent effect. I just, I just think that's fantastic, the way it turned out. <clears throat> oh, that's pretty. pretty. A couple of them haggling over, I don't know what, food, ladies, maybe both. Now there's one of the villains of our story, a South Polar Skua, <clears throat> sitting on an ice floe. You can see pretty fun, uh, Speak on that. More bergs and wave action. Now this picture was taken with an iPhone. I had my fancy camera, my 70 to, I mean 24 to 70 lens, but it wasn't ready. So this picture and that picture were both taken with my iPhone. <clears throat> this is one of my, again, one of my favorite pictures of the whole trip. That's the wave weird. action on the on the ice flow here. Now, what causes all that? What's the water and the, you know these are layers of snow here, so that probably is on its side. You know, and that and the layers that are there are just more compressed. <clears throat> so the waves rush in there and and wow. um, 
thaw the, uh, as you can see, it's all the way down into here into the water. That was just, that's close up. We were in a, we were in a Zodiac and we were just um, a few feet from this. <clears throat> I really wish I had the, um, um, I guess he, no, he was the, the boat uh, photographer. He had one of those um, uh, plastic shells that he could put underwater so he could see underwater and above water at the same. I would lo love to have seen his pictures of this. A close up of a crab eater seal. He wasn't happy with us. We were in a Zodiac just a few feet away from him. And humpbacks. Nice. I've been lucky enough to see humpbacks in Hawaii. Now these particular humpbacks, they don't go to Hawaii. They go to the Central America. And there he's uh, his spouting. And this is the lower part of the, that balloons out with water and this, that's the bottom. So that whole thing is the bottom ballooning out with water. We got to see them making screen nets. They blow air and it makes a bubble circle, which keeps the krill and the other small fish inside of it. And they just come out and um, devour them. Now, you know, you can identify whales by their tails. And there's actually a, what is it? Happy whale has a collection. They collect these for science. They call it happy whale. My whale has been seen uh, several times in, South, uh, in the Central America and at least four times in, in, on four different years in Antarctica. The whale with this and that splotch and that. So he's, uh, he or she is my whale. There you go. I wish I had been a little closer for that. But you pays you money, it takes you chances. <laughs> <clears throat> Love me some specular highlights. Skua, he was circling over this rookery too. He didn't get anything when we were there. Again, you can see the slash marks on the seal. Mm. More fog. And you see that, that pattern like this is real common. <clears throat> I cut one out that I didn't show. It just was like a lot of the others. Nice. I know I'm moving a little fast here, but I'm running over. I'm sorry. No, I talk, I talk too much and have too many pictures. <clears throat> That's quite all right. Again, a Pintado or a Cape Petrel. They were just so beautiful. So we headed back through the Drake Passage. And the waves were not bad. But stupidly, I took a shower just as we were there. And that was bending over to get my feet and then back up and bending over. And I got sick as a dog on the way back. We only had swells, but you know, there we were. So here we were towards the end. There's Cape Horn. And Chile controls Cape Horn. There's a couple of people hanging out on a <clears throat> uh, thing there with a, uh, a sculpture of an albatross that got knocked over by the winds. And you can see it's really fairly calm waters there. Um, I had something written down here. Um, where's the stupid thing? 70% um, somewhere, 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 somewhere. Something like, um, and I can't find it now. Something like, oh, in the summer, it's like 5% of the time the wind is gale force or higher in the winter. It's like 60% on Drake, pa on Drake Passage. This was with a long lens because the Chilean um, <clears throat> guy that controls the traffic within their borders, he told, he waved this off. There wasn't a single boat anywhere around, but I think he just wanted to show he was powerful. So I didn't get close enough to get a decent picture of the, now this is a, a southern giant petrel I showed you earlier. 
uh, an adult version. And you can see there's the scent gland. They also use that to shoot out some smelly stuff to attack bad guys. And this is a black-browed albatross. How big is he really? Um, the wingspan, six feet. Yep. Wow. And that's not a very big uh, albatross. <laughs> I did not see any wandering albatrosses on the trip that I'm aware of. But I was, uh, no, that, that won't give you my shortcomings. But we saw a fair number of black-browed albatrosses. You get their that's characteristic. They're beautiful birds. Yeah. Well, we came into Ushuaia. Now, Ushuaia is all the time covered. If I had to say anything, it's always covered by clouds. But we saw it as we came in, and it was pretty. Yeah. yeah that, was pretty. that was off to our west. Yeah. And that was straight ahead. <laughs> It's pretty chilly from the um, attire. We were tied up at this point. That's a, that's a Russian scientific vessel that you can also pay somewhat less to take a trip down there as well. They don't have quite the accommodations. I had a, there was a crazy Canadian um, health economist that was on the trip with us. He was a really nice guy. He and his wife were, and we sat together quite frequently. And he said that they had done that up on the uh, Northwest, the North, the, uh, Northern Passage. They had taken a, uh, I think a, an icebreaker, with a bunch of other people because that I think it's the Russians uh, are looking um, very hard for currency. But clouds always give you some interesting looks. <clears throat> There's the city itself, fifty-seven thousand people. Uh, <clears throat> so the average temperature there, I think, year-round is what the uh, uh, average uh, low temperature is in January and uh, and Yuli and, uh, uh, and on the island. It's about 40 degrees. That's the average yearly temperature. It was a little nippy. There's another one of those southern giant petrels. Mm. <clears throat> a little angry. A dolphin gull. Oh, I like him. I, that, that was just so startling to see that. Yeah. I had to get a picture of uh, him or her. The color, yeah. Yeah. And here we go. Fan del mundo, the fan de my talk, except for maybe one or two, unless you want to see this. They have an interesting, uh, they were actually a prison colony and they have an interesting story down there if you go into the prison. <clears throat> There's mm -hmm. the Southern which is also involved in the, um, the passage there. The Falkland Islands are also called the Malvinas. And that current apparently is 140 million cubic meters per second that passes around there, which is 140 times the flow of every river in the world. Wow. There's the, uh, that was the, uh, there's Larson C, and there's the breakout piece I keep on mentioning. And I just have that there to show Argentina. Okay, questions, comments, ridiculous statements? Bravo. I think it was a great presentation. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. You're my wife's... Uh, <laughs> Lucky We're officially Floridians, you know? That's right. Uh, well, I was curious. Um, I, was, I was curious, like, um, how much, what did you do to keep your, your battery from not dying in the I'm cold sorry. weather of the last My hearing's bad and I can't understand. Did somebody hear that better? Yeah, it was what what did I from? I was asking. What? I was asking, uh, what did you use to make sure that the battery didn't die on your camera? Oh. The last. Uh, well, you know, like I say, uh, if if you spend your life down in um, in Florida, you you hear about the cold and all that stuff. I never had any problem at all. 
because like I said, the coldest it got was about 28. You know, and you put one set of batteries, you put them inside your big orange coat and um, they gave us a free coat. No, they didn't. I paid a whole bunch of thousand dollars for it. And <laughs> I didn't even have enough time to use it in, in Mississippi. But, the, you know, it really wasn't an issue. Um, and, you know, you were on the boat, uh, you're on the ship long enough and a, a fair number of, the, uh, of those pictures of the um, uh, water and the uh, rock and stuff were just off the deck of the boat. And it was just, um, it was just so beautiful. I just sat there and hung out there and the wind was almost like you and um, uh, Jimmy in Hawaii there. Yeah. And, um, um, and that, that, but you know, when the wind's 32, but I never had a problem about it. Never, there was not, the camera wasn't cold. The, what you call it, weren't cold. It really wasn't that, 28 isn't that cold. Especially you have to get used to it. Other questions? I'll answer anything. <laughs> I'll make a story up if, you, if I don't know the answer. When did you go on this trip? December of 2016. Okay. Would you recommend this trip? Did you think you got your money's worth? And um, were you freezing the whole time? No. <laughs> I mean, the, the ship is perfectly warm. Now you can go on a cheaper version of this than National Geographic Lindblad. We, the advantage we had is, like I said, I, I didn't really form friendship with them, but I got to know the National Geographic photographer that was on board. Cool. And they make a point of one of the things you pay for is some fancy schmancy big name person. Uh, on our trip, we had a guy named uh, Peter Hillary and you may know his of his father, Sir Edmund. Um, and Sir Edmund was, of course, the first person to, with Tenzing Norgay to reach the summit of uh, uh, Mount Everest. Uh, Peter himself has been up, I think, three times. One of them was with his father to the summit of Everest. And, and he's gone up most of the if not all of the large peaks in the world. And he makes a living by being a, an adventurer. And I ate, of the 30 meals, I ate at least four meals with that. And he is just a, a, a an incredible gentleman. That's cool. And he was so interesting to talk to. And he was just one of the people they had on the ship. The other guy was a, was a former uh, Princeton... Um, whether um, PhD, he was a fellow that studied um, um, ice masses by using the, what's the name of the satellite? The GOES satellite, which measures the um, uh, gravity, gravity orbiting, blah, blah, blah. And it measures gravity and it does, it, you know, there's subtle changes with how far the rock is away and how high the mountains are. So they can measure the amount of ice below it over time. And he gave uh, three, he couldn't give the first talk because he was busy being sick on the way over. But, <laughs> but he moved it later. And um, like I say, he was a young guy and he's now in Arizona or Arizona State or something. He moved down there for, to start his first real job. And he was just another fascinating uh, fellow that was on the boat. So which, that's part of what you pay for other than the name. Um, the other people on the, the trip with me said it was just, you know, it was, most people think it's a life-changing experience. Um, I went to see rocks and ice and water because I had seen all that stuff about people that had gone down here on photography blog. And, but I fell in love with the penguins. Yeah, so, and no, you didn't I, think uh, you would, yeah. Pardon me? And you didn't think you would. That wasn't. No, yeah. no, I didn't. That wasn't what I was going. I didn't know. That wasn't it. I didn't have any yeah. preconceived notions about that. Cool. I've since seen a Galapagos penguin. And I hope that in March, if everything clears up, I'll be going down to the Falklands and South Georgia to right. see king penguins and macaroni penguins and rockhopper penguins, et cetera. And I may want to go to New Zealand if, if, if to see pygmy pen whatever that i think they're pygmy penguins so i'm gonna go i'm gonna be a pygmy i'm gonna be a penguin guy there you go so, <laughs> there you go <clears throat> all right well thanks so much george i really appreciate you uh, hosting uh, the talk tonight and uh george, i want to thank you for inviting me hi george and, 
<clears throat> Excellent Thank job. You. The other, Hi, George. Hi. Hi, George. The other people might not realize it, but you know why you're a penguin guy, because you come from Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Joanne Rich is a high school friend, and Joanne is uh, Joanne's been married to him for a um, hundred years or something. Hi, Vicky. <clears throat> so, right. well, that concludes nope. the meeting for tonight. Anyway, let me close it by um, saying that we meet 17th the next month on Thursday, 7 p.m. So that'll be the third Thursday. <clears throat> the photo challenge for next month, of course, going to be black and white. With, um, uh, dealer's choice, whatever you want to shoot in black and white. Cool. Uh, I'll be putting out a newsletter and then a poll later on. So uh, look for a newsletter probably this week with some of the details about the meeting. And probably the most important thing is we need a speaker for next month. So <laughs> let's see right now. Fun to do a comparison. Anybody have anything ready to go? Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Joanna. Hi, Steve. Hey, thank hi, you. Hi, so, hi. what happens um, you. if your uh, board sometimes? I have given these uh, talks all over, and you, of course, don't want to hear from me again, but um, I can talk about my trip to Costa Rica and my trip to Galapagos oh, if, cool. uh, at some point. So, <clears throat> and if I ever get down to uh, South Georgia, and um, then uh, I'll be glad to talk about that. I'm always glad to talk at any time about almost anything. <laughs> well, thank you. Your, your, your talk tonight, tonight was great. Yeah. Thank you. I had, a, I had a question. How long is the day there in December on your trip? I don't really know. It was probably about 21 hours. Wow. I, I, you know, I didn't, that's, that's an interesting question. And I looked it up. And like I say, we were we were at about the 65th, uh, 65th, 65 degrees in latitude. So we were, I mean, yeah, 45, 40. We were at 55 degrees. I'm sorry, five degrees north. So we weren't uh, truly at 60 degrees. And um, remember, it's not it's not uh, at the uh, it's at the close to the equinox. The, with the, the winter solstice, rather, that we were at. Now, I hope that one of the, my other trips, I hope to go up to, um, I was going to be in April at um, uh, Norway's, why am I blocking it? I'm blocking everything, but at Norway's islands. That Svalbard? Are just, uh, Svalbard. Svalbard. What? Svalbard. Svalbard. Yeah. I was going to go up to Svalbard for birds and polar bars and, and rock and ice again. And it got canceled because it was in April. I was very disappointed. So I hope to get there sometime while I'm still healthy. But I can't, I'm sorry, I can't tell you. Mm. Okie doke. Okay, thank you. Sounds thank cool. You. Thank you. All right. Everybody is uh, welcome. Next thank month, anybody wants to present anything, just shoot me online, let me know. Thank you so much, Jimmy. Okay. And we'll see you on the 17th. I appreciate everybody coming tonight. We had a good turnout. And it's good to see a lot of familiar faces. I'm just Thanks. glad I figured out Zoom. <laughs> that? Thank you. I'm just glad I figured <laughs> out. <laughs> yeah. So uh, pass on to anybody else that you see. If they're having trouble logging in or finding a site, uh, like I said, I'll send an email probably within a week about the next meeting, and it'll have a direct link to it. Um, I'll update our page too and send you links to it. And also kind of look at for a poll at some point. If you've got ideas about what the group should be, let me know. And I'll, uh, uh, Kevin's got a good call. idea. Yeah. But he'll send it to you. Yeah. No, I said it was stoned photography. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to leave on that one. <laughs> All right. Everybody have a good night. All right, bye-bye. Good night. All right, thanks, Jimmy. Good night. Thanks, bye. Good night.